Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday. I'm Beth Copeland with Georgia Christian Business Network, and we are putting God back in business. I want to apologize that we're starting just a little bit late today. Technical difficulties, but we persevered and look at God. He created an opportunity for us to come to you with this outstanding show that we have today. I am so excited to welcome back to our GCBN Wellness Wednesday platform, Karen Harrison. Karen, thank you for being patient. We started, listen, at 10 minutes, 15 minutes prior to the show, but still, here we are today. You are here and you have a great word for us. Okay, welcome back is what I want to say. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, technology is either your best friend or <laughs> your worst nemesis. <laughs> no, we're up and running, excited to share today. Excellent. Thank you so very much for coming back to the platform. I also thank want you. to thank you for being uh, a committed GCBN member. Uh, you're a part of our GCBN family. Uh, first opportunity that we talked, you expressed an interest and you were faithful to follow through and you're entering your second year with us. So we're really yeah. excited about that. Okay, so what I want to tell you before you get started is allow you to introduce yourself. Uh, there's an opportunity where we continually uh, send out posts and LinkedIn, all of our social media platforms to help people to understand who you are, what you do, and the importance of what you bring uh, for the lives of God's people. This is your opportunity prior to starting for you to just share a little bit about from your heart who you are, what you do, and why we should really care. Sure. Well, Beth, thanks again so much for having me, and I appreciate GCBN and just the platform you provide for Christian professionals like myself to share a little bit more about what our message is and how we really connect people to the gospel through what we do. And I love nutrition. I have a background in physical education, exercise science, and uh, really enjoyed teaching that side of it. Um, then when my kids went back to school, all of them were in school, I had the privilege to stay home. Uh, I decided as, you know what, what do I want to do now, uh, now that they're in school? And I went back to get a nutritional therapy uh, certification and also continuing on to be a personal trainer, as well as uh, functional diagnostic nutrition, which is more um, the clinical side. I love the clinical side of nutrition. And so I'm technically a holistic functional medicine based nutritionist and really working alongside people to help them uh, customize a health plan that includes what we call dress for health success. So it's diet, rest, exercise, stress mastery, and supplements. So we're tying, trying to tie all that together. So I have an online business um, right, right here in Georgia. We live in Snellville. I have three girls, uh, one in college, one graduating, and one will be starting high school next year. So oh my gosh, um, very blessed with them. But um, yeah, I just been on a journey to learn and you, as soon as you start learning especially in the area of nutrition and health you realize how much you don't know <laughs> you know uh, so I definitely have more to learn but I would excited to share with you today uh, the three s's kind of a foundational look at health and just give people hope um, for their health and really from a functional medicine and tying it to uh, what the scripture says about health and how we can know God's plan for that. So, oh my yeah, gosh, I just love what you're doing. It sounds like, it, or maybe I missed something before, but you've expanded since the last time you, yes. some of yes. the, your scope is, is wider. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. Well, what I'd like to position for uh, those that are new to GCBN and even for our members that may not be familiar, that this year we're focused on what I clearly heard from God is the year of elevation, elevation 2022. And so the opportunity for us at GCBN anyway, as you know, is we look at the whole person. And so we have a holistic approach to putting God back in business. And the opportunity for us is to make certain that we're not just trying to um, pull something out of the air and said, oh, 
just go elevate or just, but there's strategic to it. But number one is obedience to God is that what he wants from us is a total person. And so we are our business. And so the importance of when we're praying about, okay, God, what's our approach to elevation? We feel the Take Charge Tuesday platforms with individual speakers, um, those that are experienced in business to help us to understand elevation. Yesterday, we had a dynamic presenter, Crystal Parker out of Central Florida, who taught us elevation through submission. If you didn't hear it, please go back. And so today we wanted to align Wellness Wednesday to follow the opportunities that we were being encouraged on the Take Charge Tuesday business out of the house so that we could get uh, mental wellness and physical health and everything that you just described that you do. And so Pamela and Rich and I came up with, let's approach it from hope for this to follow that immediately. But then we wanted to pull out a segment of the month so, to have you come back. So you've, you've done us well before, you're just outstanding and the tidbits and the nuggets and the information and the education that you help us with, with our health has been so instrumental. So we wanted to have an opportunity, not just today, but throughout the quarter, we're gonna get you back in a little while, in a, in a month or so, to come back and share some other things. But today, this is your platform. Allow God to use you. Let's hear those three S's. I'm, I'm, I'm writing and taking notes as well. And Lisa's over on the, uh, Lisa Muth, my virtual assistant, is over on the Facebook side of the house. And so we'll get information back to you as needed that regard, okay? All right. Well, very good. I'm going to share my screen. As a teacher, I like using PowerPoint and visuals, so we're going to kind of walk through, and I'll pause here and there. If people have questions, Beth, just grab my attention, and I can always stop and start again. Uh, so we're hitting some topics today. Yeah, go ahead, Beth. Yeah. Yes, uh, there's already a request out there for sure. you to repeat the acronym, okay? Sure, yeah. It's DRESS, D-R-E-S-S, -S, for Health Success. And it includes the diet, rest, exercise, stress mastery, and supplements. Mm -hmm. That's kind of our model we use in our coaching program. And we'll highlight that awesome. here at the end of the presentation. Yeah. Okay, great. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to share my screen here. And we'll see how, how good this works. All right, if I can click on, let me see if the slideshow will work. Yeah, perfect. Can you guys see those? Yay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Step one, audio. Step two, slides. Here we go. <laughs> so in hope of health, part of that has to do with how much of our health do we feel we're in charge of? How much of our health do we feel we can control? So as we get started today, uh, we're gonna hit the whole topic from a very high level, nutrition and health from a functional medicine and faith-based perspective, those combinations. And it's really kind of awesome. So three big ideas, we like to start out just talking about high level, three big ideas. Our self-assessment, sometimes we don't really realize where we are in our health profile until we take a minute, stop our busy schedule and re-look at, okay, how am I looking and feeling? What are some things that I'm dealing with? And people don't realize they may not have to be living with some symptoms that they have been for a long time. So let's take a quick self-assessment. That's our first S. Sometimes uh, just identifying the problem, obviously, is the great starting point. And then we're going to take a quick look at scripture today. There's a framework in God's word that's fantastic, talking about exactly what Beth said, the holistic picture, the holistic picture of the person, but it's also the holistic picture of the scripture. And when we take a topic and pull it out of its context, let's say in the minor prophets or in the New Testament, and only highlight that aspect while there's some truth to it, of course, we're not capturing the whole of God's word. And so when we look at nutrition and health through uh, Genesis to Revelation, that holistic viewpoint, it, it's a really cool message of God uh, gives us in the Bible. 
and then systems. So then we kind of get into a little bit of the nitty gritty of the anatomy uh, physiology and really the foundations of health and how we can build our health from the ground up. All right, so those are the three S's, self-assessment, scripture, and systems today. So how would you define physical health? In our Western medicine world, a lot of times physical health is really just defined as the absence of disease. We don't have anything coded. We, don't, we haven't been diagnosed, right? But for really the true definition of physical health, if anybody wants to pipe up and say a word or a phrase, um, I'll give a second to let people do that. Uh, how would you define actual physical health in our bodies? And I don't see the chat here, Beth. So I yeah. Have to okay. Answer. Well, Lee has said energy. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Vitality to be able to complete the day's tasks. Absolutely. That's one of the main complaints. People are tired. People live right. tired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's if there's anybody else, yeah, Facebook. Okay, I don't have anything from Lisa right now. Okay, on, from Facebook. Okay, I will come back if there's anything to add. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, really, it's the ability of the function, the actual function of the body. Are we able to to produce energy from the foods we eat? Are we able to sleep well? Are we able to process and cope, be resilient through stress? It's the function of the body. So it's not so much the absence of disease, um, but the presence of wholeness. And so how healthy, kind of the self-assessment, here we go, from one to 10, it's kind of a nice scale to see how healthy are you? Um, a lot of people, it's interesting when we talk with them in our coaching program, they'll say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly healthy. Um, I'm, I do take a blood pressure medication. I do have type two diabetes. And I also am on a cholesterol lowering medication, but they feel okay during the day and they're man, what they call managing their health. Hope for your health is moving beyond management, this cycle of management to mastering it. And by mastering health, we're really wanting to get more to the root cause of why the function isn't there versus just managing the symptoms. So when someone says, how healthy are you? If you have a score or a rating, if you feel like you wanna share with us, you're welcome to. Health is personal, so no pressure at all. Um, but I know there's some areas in my own health that I still need to improve. And we're just talking physical right now. How healthy are you? How I don't think that I've you? ever heard the two managing and mastering related to health in the same sentence, you know, uh, that's enlightening right there is, and encouraging that there's an opportunity for elevation is me, and I'm just gonna be transparent, <laughs> is that managing was my focus, is managing, and I wanted to win, but I never took it all the way to say what you just said, to master my health yes. would be a good goal. Yeah. We'll put that in a little bit more specific example toward the end. So you, you know, it's a little bit easier to define what mastery looks like. Um, awesome. but, yeah. So how healthy are you based on that rating? How much control of your health over your physical health do you feel like you have? And that's an interesting one for people to answer. Uh, let's say they feel like, you know, they're maybe a five or six on the health scale. They're kind of normal for their age. They feel okay, but they also feel kind of bad some days. You know, they haven't been diagnosed necessarily with anything, uh, but they're not sure they may have something that they're not sure on yet health-wise. But then how much control does that five or six relate? The control match the health score. And a lot of times for a lot of people, they feel kind of helpless. And, and sometimes helpless equals hopeless in health. And so what do I do? Where do I start? How much can I influence? Am I just at the mercy? What advice do I listen to? How much control do we have over our own health? So we're gonna answer some of those questions today. Sometimes we, we rate controllability with these factors here. And um, you know, maybe your scale of controllability will change by the end of the presentation. You feel like, okay, I can actually do more than I realize to impact my own health. There's some uncontrollables on here. Sure, your age right? Your ethnicity, God determines that. Um, but there's also your blood type, 
your body type, even those are all things that God's given you. Um, but things like lifestyle and diet, exercise, sleep, even our beliefs to some degree, the support system, you know, those things we can control. So if, making sure that we have a really good confidence and hope in what we can impact is one of the biggest pieces um, that we want to offer people in our coaching and, and even just in our day-to-day -day lives here, you can do something about this in this area. And man, those, those things can greatly impact uh, your health for good. All right. So going back, we did a quick self-assessment here. Now let's hit some scripture. How does our health tie into scripture? What's the framework that we read in the Bible on nutrition and health? And then we'll look at some systems. So a really interesting, starting at the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and everything physical. This is really interesting. I teach earth science and everything physical, our flesh, blood, bone, bodies, everything physical, all the physical life, the source of it is the ground. You know, in Genesis, it says out of the ground, God made plants. Out of the ground, God made animals. Out of the ground, God made man or formed man. So our physical being, our physical bodies are made out of the ground. So if the source of life is the soil, it's kind of interesting. If we track that theme all the way through scripture, here's the hope of health. And it's an awesome picture. So in creation, God created the soil, the elements, the minerals, everything that's a component of the soil, the bacteria is even. And from that, he created this physical life, this amazing bodies and plants and animals as well. But what happened, what was cursed in the fall? One of the main things was the ground. So that's the foundation that we start looking at nutrition from. Everything that we eat comes from the ground. Every, every plant, obviously. But then if every animal food eats the plants, everything is from the soil, starts there. So it's cursed. And then the flood, what did, what's the ground? He cleansed it. At the law, God claimed it. I'm going to live among these people in this area. This is your land. This is your promised land. And then the gospel, it was covered with Christ's blood. At the church, he conquered the curse. He conquered the ground. And then the kingdom, one day, he's going to actually complete it and restore it and make it all new. So the ground is kind of a theme throughout the whole scripture. And it's kind of the foundation of our physical health. Isn't that cool? Wow. It's awesome. Totally awesome. So when we look at the ground as the foundation of physical health and even the message of nutrition and health in the scriptures, I was taking my nutrition classes. And here's a quick example. As I'm studying, we're learning that there's nutrients in plants that need converted. And there's nutrients in plants that are super healthy. Like let's say an omega-3 fatty acid in a plant, it needs to be converted to the active form. And in animals, that active form of omega-3s is already there. It's already functioning. Uh, iron in plants is called ferrous and it needs to be converted and to be utilized, it's harder to be absorbed if we take in iron from plants. Iron from animals, which is called heme iron, it's so much easier to absorb and use. So in all of that, real quick example, plants are super healthy. Plants give us so many good nutritional values, but from the curse, plants are not enough. And it's awesome. It's like, God saying to Cain in the garden, your work, what I gave you for at the beginning of creation, everything that you could do and control is needed, but it's not enough. And so from the curse came animal foods all the way through. And God is the lamb of God given slain from the foundation of the world, really this death to life nutrition. So plants actually have to be sprouted or fermented or the process of using grains and the process of even getting the most nutrition out of vegetables or when we culture them, we ferment them when we sprout them. So as far as a nutritional application, and that's all from the curse. 
It's like they have to be bound, they're bound and they have to be converted. I'm listening to these classes going, I know exactly why that's true. And it's from the scripture, from the fall and the curse. So our food system has kind of had a little bit of a curse on it too, if you want to put it that way. Uh, And then the flood and the promise, all of these stages throughout all of scripture, the nutrition instructions and food actually change. And so you think, oh, I should be eating clean meats from the law. Oh, I should be eating from maybe, let's say, creation in the Garden of Eden nutrition. That's the right way to eat. Well, if we pull out one or two single pieces from scripture without looking at the whole of the message of food in the Bible, we're going to miss it. And the message of food in the Bible, which is hope for health, isn't one about health. The message of food in the Bible is one about revelation of who God is and his person and his work. And it's awesome. So let me see if I have it on the next slide. Yep. A really quick example of this, instead of walking through the seven time frames, there's a seven purposes for food that are linked to those seven time frames on this previous slide. So for instance, creation, the food there, the purpose in food is regeneration. It's seed-based in, in Genesis. And there's seven different purposes I highlight in a free course online on my website. You can sign up for that free course and it walks through each of these seven time frames in scripture and the purpose of food in scripture. And again, overarching message is one of revelation, who God is and his purposes for us. And when we align that, our health with that, with his purposes, it kind of cuts through all the confusion that's in the world and the nutrition information that's out there. So back to this slide, when I was going through my nutrition classes, I thought, you know what, I need to just look up in the Bible how many food words there are and which ones are used most often. Sometimes that's just a good exercise to do a concordance, you know, old fashioned concordance or even digital. And so this is what I found, Beth, this is really interesting. The top six food words in scripture used the most times it was very clear. There were six that were used the most times. And then after that, there's a big gap that like the next one, when maybe we would have been a fish, I don't even remember, but there was, it was used significantly less or here we go. Water, bread, meat, oil, wine, and fruit. Those are the top six food words used in scripture. In fact, every meal God provided his people or anytime God intervened in food and provided a meal, it was always meat and bread. It was always meat and bread. So these top six food words, look at this. They mirror the six nutrients. So water, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals. We don't have time to get into why these mirror. Um, But man, why? Why those top six? I'm literally sitting at my kitchen table, going through my nutrition classes and going into this little, little mini Bible study. Why these top six? Oh my goodness. This is Jesus. Jesus is living This water. is awesome. This life. is totally awesome. Isn't that cool? So the message of food yes. is so revelatory. What he reveals with us through natural health, through physical health, is really a picture of who he is to us spiritually. This Fun, is just, it? I mean, I mean, really, really. And, and I mm-hmm. love because it is a revelation. You know, that's what I'm experiencing in this instance is a revelation with a correlation of, you know, what the Bible says and what is relative to what actually are the six nutrients. So this is just This is just amazing within itself. It's enlightening. And I hope that everyone is having an opportunity uh, to just say, wow, and to embrace what you're seeing. So keep going, please. Yeah. It's, you know, if I were to ever define what is healthy eating, if you were to Google that, you'd have millions of answers. You have, I don't even know how many different types of food recommendations, food pyramids. We should be eating this. We should be eating that. We should be eating, you know, low fat, low carb. Uh, we should be eating vegan, plant based. We should, you know, there's so many recommendations, right? How do you know if it's true? How do you know a recommendation is true? So defining healthy eating is simply following God's design for food. Following God's design for food. What do cows eat? If we're eating the meat from cows that are fed grass, literally there's a scripture that says God made the grass for the cows, Psalm 104. So if we're following God's design, it's going to be healthy for us. There's some bio-individuality, obviously to that definition, everybody's different. 
Mm -hmm. um, but the food recommendations, we can attach history and science. And when you blend history and science together, it is really awesome. That is a truthful framework of what true healthy living and healthy eating is. And so history, and, and what this is, is the, excuse me, the education yeah. piece of this is significant. And because I know I can relate to what you said earlier, you know, what do I eat? Should I eat this? Should I not eat this? And what is our basis for that? Because there's so many programs out there, so many opportunities and platforms that speak to no meat, you know, and clearly here we need to eat some meat, you know, yeah. and there's a purpose behind it, protein. And I love it, how the significance of Jesus, the Lamb of God, and I just pulled that out. But yeah, this is very educational and we've got to be able to have opportunity to hear this. And I don't know if there's uh, on me that, I haven't been exposed to it, but this this slot within itself is just so eye opening. I would love to hear some feedback from those that are either on Facebook Live and or Lee, Dick, or Kim. Thank you for joining me here on Zoom. Uh, what do you think about that slide? Is it just me and and God's just speaking? Because I think it brings freedom. There's so much bondage, and that within itself, the restrictions. Uh, are weighty. And then just while I'm here, let me just say another thing about what you said that so marries and so just sent me an affirmation about Take Charge Tuesday from yesterday and how we're really on this thing of elevation that this is from God. Because the whole thing that she talked about is what is the one thing, and I'm going to miss some, but what is the one thing that you can do uh, to lose weight um, and you're actually not doing anything and you're resting, you're at rest. And, and the whole things that she named, all of this stuff that you were going to experience, you're losing weight, you're resting and you're not worrying about things and um, you're having a positive mental attitude or whatever. Guess what the answer was? You probably know already, S sleeping, mm -hmm. you're asleep. And that was like a eye opener. And I see that tying with what you said to this point is an opportunity that we don't understand. God gives the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. That sleep is, is very important, our rest to our what we do in business and how we operate. What we put in our bodies is very important. And someone said, I think Lee said earlier, energy is, is a result of physical, but you said it's our function. And we need our overall, our physical is our overall function. And we need to understand that what we put in is going to be the output that we'll be able to deliver. This is yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you have a comment, Lee? Yeah, I'll just add as far as um, revelation goes, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's amazing because we always talk about who we are and whose we are. And this revelation is telling us who God is. So, you know, the more we know God, the, the more we love God. And um, so we know uh, who God is, who we are, and whose we are. So this is really eye-opening. That's great. That's great. Yeah, it's like all things are created for our health. We need carbohydrates. We need proteins. We need plants. We need animals. We need all of it. Now, everybody may need it in a little bit different combination. So some people do better on a lot more plants than animals. Some people do better, more animals. So we do three different, so we do diet typing in our coaching. So we can kind of be able to put people in a little more of a biological uh, genetic based on their, there's a couple of assessments we do to, to see what diet type works best for them but we really need all kinds of foods. God made those and we align with his design and quality food quality is big in our coaching program, uh, grass-fed meats, wild-caught seafood versus farm rate, you know, those types of things are huge and make a difference in the actual nutrition and then how foods are prepared. All of that has historical evidence. All of that goes back to even examples in scripture of how they made their bread back then it was super healthy. And I'm taking these classes, learning all of this for the first time in our modern world, you know, it's like, wow, we need to go back to a lot of these historical methods of food preparation as well. But yeah, the diet, 
diet is so important. The rest, like to Beth's point, is so important. In fact, there's one main rest recommendation we make as soon as someone gets started working with us, and it's a 24-hour rest in a week. We try to get someone to the point, and they're just in their routine, because right, everything that has to do with habits <laughs> and controlling our health comes down to our routine. And building in a 24-hour rest, maybe you start with a 16 hours, maybe you start consecutive. 24 hour rest in a week. That's God's model as well to his people in the old Testament. That has worked so well for me in my life it may not be the same day every week, but it's 24 hour consistent rest. Right. Rest. We define it as not doing any obligatory productivity. That's like having to be done. So enjoying things, going to the I park. Love you know, it. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Cause on the seventh day, God rested. This is, right. this is wonderful. That within itself, and I love that you give permission to start for somebody like me uh, mm -hmm. with, you said 16, but I'm saying eight hours. <laughs> I yeah. want to reduce it a little bit. And then I'll mm -hmm. build up, you know, yeah. excellent. Yeah. And there's different seasons of life, and we want to recognize that too. But we easily get in these breaths of just go, 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 without intentionally stopping one day a week and resting our mental, emotional, our physical, all of it. So, really, health is just as much about history and what people have eaten for thousands of years. What have generations been healthy generations? There's been so much nutrition uh, research and pioneering um, that has looked at this aspect, and it's very enlightening and it matches scripture. It matches the word of God. So it's just as much about history as it is about science. And I won't go into a lot of details. A lot of, you know, of us know, I think it's getting more and more well known of how our food system has changed over the years and how that's impacted our health. We've seen such an influx in autoimmune conditions and autism and learning disabilities in kids and obesity, of course, and uh, diabetes. We still have heart disease as number one killer in our country after all of these, you know, government recommendations and all of this. And it's really because we're floating farther and further and further away from God's design for our food, sunshine, exercise, that whole dynamic of what life was historically has changed and shifted. So instead we have to be intentional about exercise. We go to the gym versus just going to the field, right? We, our life is different. It's not wrong. Of course, it's just different. We have to be a lot more intentional with our activity level, a lot more intentional with our routine, not letting everything overtake. We can work from home. We can work anytime we want. That's kind of a downside in some respects, you know, so our food system and history, the evolution of this has really made a difference in our health generationally. And we pass that down. It's a whole science called epigenetics. We pass that down to the next generation. And so that's even biblical. So the third and the fourth generation, we see the negative effects and also the third and fourth generation, we can see positive effects if we start changing things now. So refining a cancer was kind of the first part. We had a whole industrial revolution. Then we had birth of these food giants like Kellogg's and the mass productions. Then the chemical revolution with World War II, we had to ship food overseas. It had to last, it had to have a shelf life. World War II shifted a lot of how we preserved and kept food shelf stable. So we had a lot of chemicals. After the war, all those chemicals went into fertilizers, went into producing pesticides, went into producing. And so now we have genetically modified food, a whole other level. Of, of leaving where God's system and his design for food was. I love um, that quote. I was hoping you'd read that out. I like that. I love that quote. Yeah. <laughs> if it came from a plant, eat it. If it was made in a plant, don't. Yeah. That's a pretty good I general quote. Michael Pollan's yeah. a great author. He's he's not a believer, but um, he's written some great sources on, on food and nutrition from Excellent. this whole uh, modern versus historical viewpoint. There's been some nutritional pioneers. I mentioned them really quickly earlier. And one of them was Dr. Weston A. Price. And he says, life in all his fullness is mother nature obeyed. He spent 13 years of his life going around the globe, food testing, all these healthy people groups who ate just the locally grown foods. And he found there's so many diets that were healthy over 13 years. This is real research. This isn't, you know, backed by and paid for by a specific company that's wanting to promote their product. This is true scientific research. This is a sad quote to me. Life and all is, is mother nature obeyed. He was almost there. <laughs> he almost had it right. He recognized God's natural law. There was a natural law to this system, but he gave credit to just this general mother nature. And we know it's the biblical God. Life and all is fullness is God obeyed. 
life in all its fullness is the God of the Bible obeyed. But he knew, I know you know, you can just read through, glance through them. There's a lot here, but nutritious food is found everywhere. And he, these are some commonalities. Everybody ate some salts. Salts that were natural, all trace minerals included. So they used bones for broth. They had an equal balance of omega-3s, had high enzymes, fat content varied all, all across the globe. You had Northern Scandinavian groups at 80% fat in their diet. You think, what? <laughs> you know, and there's tropical tribes that hardly had any fat. They ate fish and tropical fruits. Seeds and nuts and grains were soaked. I'm happy to share these slides if someone wants to take a little bit more time. I know I'm flying through them. But it's so interesting that really it's the source of our food. It's the design in our food. And it's whether or not the food is truly whole. Or all the pieces that were initially, originally in the food, still there. That's what makes it healthy. That's what gives us health. And that there's so many great sources nowadays. And so I can easily provide a, a brand or a sourcing of quality foods. Kroger even has some, Sam's has some, you know, there's a lot of options, especially in our American society, but um, it's really interesting that there, these are the common 10 kind of these common factors that are based on what he found all across the globe. All right. So we're diving into the last section. I hope I'm doing okay on time. It looks like we have about 10 more minutes. Do I want to pause for any question or comment here? There's a comment from Kim. She said, thank you. I would love to have the slides. So that would yeah, be great. Absolutely. How would you like for us to provide email addresses or just yeah, like give whoever them your wants contact to send information? Them. Sure. If I could get their email, I'll just send them a quick email. Thanks for attending this session. And uh, I'll just attach the slides as PDFs and they can view them at their leisure. Okay, so over on the Facebook side of the house, if there's an interest for the slides, uh, Lisa, please take the email addresses and then I'll capture those that are here. That'd be great. All right, so the last little S, we've done a little quick self-assessment and how much can we control and with a little quick look at scripture and history and kind of a framework for nutritional truth at least. And then the last thing is systems. And this is really cool. This is where I will always be learning. But these systems, look at this metabolic pathways. How can someone look at this metabolic pathway chart and not believe there's some design to who we are as people? It's so complex. Metabolics is simply just this building up or the tearing down processes that go on in our bodies all the time. And it's these chemical processes really of every living organism. And so I will not ever be able to master that chart, <laughs> but yeah. it shows you the awesomeness of our creator and how well he's knit us and joined us together. And so the tear down and build up processes are really the maintenance of life. This is really the basis of health. The foundation of health is metabolics, metabolic health. And so our goal in our coaching is to build, really rebuild this metabolic health. So the systems that are even kind of like, I guess, the foundation or the joints uh, in construction, you know, those corner joists, um, not a construction. So sorry if I totally blew that analogy, but it's the foundation that health is built on. Digestion is one of the main systems of metabolic health. When we look at health, no matter what the condition is, it always 100% is rooted in digestion, some aspect of digestion, how the stomach, the pH of the stomach, the liver, the gallbladder, the detoxification, the breakdown of fats, the absorption, small intestine, the ability for us to be able to take our food and use it for energy, our whole microbiome, all those invisible guys in our system that either create health or tear it down, build it or tear it down. That's all digestion, immune system system. People that struggle really hard with COVID are probably somehow compromised in their digestive tract. 80% of your immune system is in your digestive tract. Our brains literally are connected to our guts. There's a gut brain connection, moods, uh, hormone balance, so much of health issues and symptoms are, can be traced back to digestion. So in our phase two of our coaching program, we really focus on really rebuilding digestive wellness. Then the second system, we're looking at two systems really quickly as we close today is HPA, which is hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal. And it's this access of three glands that control basically all of our stress response, basically all of our steroid hormones, all of our 
sex hormones, progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. So a lot of times when hormone balance, the symptoms of hormone balance are there. This is really a, at the root of it is HPA and at the root of it is digestion. It's kind of crazy, but they're all connected. And we've we look at it and pull out, oh, let's raise thyroid hormone. Oh, let's raise estrogen or rebalance just one or two numbers. And you treat the lab or the paper versus the person. We're missing really this mastery concept of let's figure out why this imbalance is there. When we figure out why, then we're really solving the problem. And the gland may not be the problem. The gland that produces the hormones, thyroid or whatever, may actually not be the problem. So if we end up in just the management cycle versus the mastery, we're going to get a symptom seemingly maybe even unrelated down the road. It's going to pop up another symptom, another symptom, another issue. Let's say we have start having some joint pain. Then we go get treated for that. We're chasing it. We're managing it versus finding out the root cause. So all of these symptoms really, as far as physical health, aren't the problem. They're really the result of the problem functionally. And then symptoms downstream can be far removed from the problem upstream. And here's some examples of those. So allergies, gout, immune, joint, anxiety, depression, diabetes, all of that can be rooted in digestion. And it's so cool. When we work with people, we do what we call a GI map and we do a food sensitivity MRT screen. We do some things that are, give us really good insight into what pieces of digestion in that whole North to South process are, are not functioning right. Start to rebuild that microbiome. Instead, yes, we can do some symptom management. Yes, we can alleviate some anxiety, maybe with some amino acids, even some natural ways while working on the root. And when we get to the root, man, some of these other superficial symptoms will kind of all disappear and they don't even seem related. I get hives every now and then. Um, I have some seasonal allergies. My blood sugar numbers don't look too good. All of it. When you address the root, you may knock out all of it at once. And it's really cool to see people find that aha. It's like, oh, I'm not going to be chasing all of these in individual issues and trying to manage them. I'm going to get to the root and master it. And that second system, a lot of those same things, sleep, huge, and digestion, huge, and HPA hormone balance, weight issues, calories in, calories out can definitely work for a time. But if there's some under, underlying metabolic uh, dysfunction that we don't find out, if we don't find that out, then all of a sudden, two years later, they have arthritis. Three years later, they have hypothyroid, maybe Hashimoto autoimmune condition. It's going to show up. Your body's going to tell you, hey, this is something's wrong. Your body's going to tell you that in all kinds of ways. At the end of the day, it's back to these two systems. At some point, it's back to these two systems. And when people address their physical health, this is hope right here. If you address these foundational systems, man, you're resolving a lot of these other conditions. And, you know, there's a lot of genetics to health for sure. A lot of predisposition. But the awesome thing is there's a lot that we can control and there's a whole nother science called epigenetics that says based on our choices, based on our nutrition, based on our exercise, based on our rest, based on how we manage our stress, based on all those things that we can control, we choose which genes are going to be expressed or not. So that epigenetic model is the blueprint on top of which our gene code is made. So it's not like our, our genes are not our destiny. And that's a lot of hope for a lot of people. And then when you address it from a functional medicine, foundational uh, root causal approach like this, in a kind of a system that we do a phased approach, you're not tackling all of it at once. And each phase builds on the next. And so by the end of it, you're realizing, oh my goodness, I'm sleeping better. I have people find that feel like I got a text from a member the other day and she has diabetes. She struggled with diabetes for 20 years. A lot of her diabetes was triggered when her gallbladder was removed. Guess what? Digestion. So we've gone through, she's gone through phase one and she's doing really well. Her sugar numbers are fantastic right now. She's even starting to drop some weight that she's had a hard time losing until we found out what are those trigger foods that are causing that inflammation. So when you look at health from a foundational, functional, this root causal approach, and really these two systems, it kind of simplifies things. It makes that metabolic chart look a little bit more, more manageable. And at the end of the day, you're truly mastering.
So in closing, just a really quick picture, uh, kind of our whole, and we talk about physical health, we have the allopathic approach and fantastic, brilliant minds in this allopathic approach, but it's disease management approach, right? And there's definitely a spot and a place for that. There's definitely a spot and a place and a value for medications, but they pretty much only have medication and surgery in their tool belt. And there's definitely, again, a time for those. And then you have osteopathic, which those are DOs and doctor of osteopathic medicine, and they can diagnose and treat. And they have a lot more body work in their training. They try to address underlying causes and lifestyle modifications with some body work. Not every DO does the body work side of it, but they're a little more open to nutrition and lifestyle as well. Uh, and then naturopath, that's, they've been trained just like a medical doctor, but they also have all this training in the nutritional therapies and the natural therapies, botanicals and oils, all of these other things. So there's so many tools in the tool belt. Don't ever feel if you're stuck in a health issue that you don't really know what the answer is and you're kind of tired of just taking medication and covering the symptom. There are so many other tools out, out there options today. And I think people are really waking up and realizing that. And there are so many things, therapies that can be done that really support your body's own ability versus replace it and only cause another symptom later. We want to master that. We want to shut that whole management cycle down and master it. So here's a quick summary, Beth. Hopefully this will be a little bit more clear on what we mean by management versus mastery. Management symptom-based. Oh, I feel this. I'm going to take this, right? Or I don't feel this, so I need this. I'm going to take this. I'm going to do this. Um, and there's a place for that, for sure. But really the mastery is really looking at the underlying cause. Management kind of just repeats this cycle. How many diets have we been on to lose weight, right? We're just cycling through, let's, let's do this again. When really we need to be addressing that underlying cause and it stops that cycle. We're actually mastering it. We're getting the freedom from. And focuses on what versus focuses on why. That's a good one. And management treats the paper. Here's your lab results. Let's raise this level. Let's lower this level. Let's, instead of like looking at the whole entire person, instead of looking at multiple labs that give us a bigger picture altogether, and then why maybe for that person, it's not the thyroid at all. It actually is the gut. And when we heal the gut, then the thyroid will resolve itself. So you want to treat the person instead of just the paper. Uh, management says, let's see if your labs are in range or not in range versus mastery looks at the whole correlation of multiple labs together. What is the whole message, kind of the whole message of scripture? What is the whole picture of someone's uh, health from several different functional labs? And we correlate all of that with the person. And management replaces the function. And sometimes again, that's needed. But instead, ideally, you want to always try to be supporting the function and then natural laws and natural freedom and then calories in, calories out. That's always a good starting point. You definitely want to work within that, but that's not enough. Kind of like plants they are not quite enough. You want to restore that metabolic health. So you don't have another symptom, another whole uh, way your body's saying something's out of balance down the road. So let's move beyond man management to mastery. And it's just like going through scripture. You have to go through the law, realize that we need a savior to get to the grace freedom. And so sometimes there's some therapeutic things that we do from a you know functional medicine standpoint that are kind of limiting and restricting short term, but the whole goal is to move towards freedom and mastery. And it's so hope filled. It is so hope filled. So hopefully that's helpful. This is a dress for health success slide. We hit each of those topics in our coaching in a phased approach includes assessments and uh, lab testing, even someone's interested in that part and the coaching as well. Happy to talk with anybody who's interested further on that side. And uh, I'll skip this part. This is a, just an example of health mastery, how the thyroid may not be the issue and how the gut really is. And knowing that really will help resolve that in the end. We have a Facebook page, of course. We have some free resources online, grocery shopping. Uh, that seven lesson biblical framework is a free course that's email. Uh, we have a nutrition calculator. You can even know some of your numbers if you want to. And we have a couple new really great online tools coming out soon as well. So Beth, thanks so much. I know I talk like a mile a minute, but I want to stay within our time frame. So well, um, you gonna... have done an outstanding Here. job oh, in presenting God. a wealth of information. Um, I am so excited. And I was going to speak to one of the sides, but um, sure. and I will try to still articulate what I'm going to say here. It's still where I was from the beginning, having heard all of that, even stronger now about management to mastery being an opportunity 
for us to use as a goal because honestly, I still prior to today had not heard the two combined like that. And I'm encouraged also by something you said, um, you know, people are always talking about your metabolism, you know, um, mm-hmm. addressing that, but then there's always an opportunity, let me assign appeal to this or that, and not knowing that it might be some underlying issues that are causing my metabolism not to be operated as it should. This is outstanding. I am so thankful that God redirected our past to cross. You know, I knew her from years ago. She taught uh, Jessica only, right? Yeah, yeah she taught mm-hmm. Jessica in high school, her basketball coach, all of that. Mm-hmm. But God saw fit later in life for us to connect for such a time as this so that you could be a part of this great cause. Because sometimes, honestly, and I have to be transparent. And initially, when I started business, I was just focused on, you know, wanting more from God for the business. And it wasn't even this business that I was in or some of the other ones that were doing. (laughs) But I'm so glad that I learned so that when he brought me to this calling for GCBN, that I understood back there, what was needed back here, that we have to focus on uh, the holistic approach. And so when you came along, it really just started me thinking even more that we need to embrace it on a higher level. And so when Rich actually introduced the two, reintroduced, I should say us, uh, I didn't even understand the full benefit, but I knew that we had to bring you back. So I Mm -hmm. positioned you as a part of this month and then in later in the quarter so that you can share this great information. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'm thinking about some other things as a result of this, but I'll talk to you about those later. That, that sure. may be an opportunity for further partnership. Listen, thank you all for joining so much. We're gonna get the email addresses to you so that you can acknowledge those that actually want to receive the uh, presentation slides that you were sharing. Now. I don't have any other questions. I know there are several people over on Facebook Live. And so those of you that are interested, please let Lisa know your email addresses. Karen, outstanding. Totally, totally outstanding. No, thank you. And thank you for, again, for being a part of GCBN. And we will catch up soon. I do need to chat with you a couple of things about March. But the opportunity today is what I'd like to say to you all is thank you so much for joining us on the Zoom platform for your patience over here. As a matter of fact, uh, just persevere at everybody that tried to get in. Then we had to take them back offline and put them back and take them back and they all show back up. So God has a plan for you as well. For those that were patient on the Facebook side of the house while we worked through those, Glad you didn't miss this opportunity. Listen, there's great to come. This is our one other opportunity that's happening on Friday. Lisa Mood, our Georgia Christian Business Network Executive Virtual Assistant, um, entrepreneur extraordinaire. Uh, mm-hmm. Great opportunity for you to hear on our Friday noon nugget this week. Next week, we're going to kick off March and we, excuse me, I skipped all the way to March. I skipped February, okay? We're going to kick off February with Gladys Aguay on our Take Charge Tuesday platform. And then on uh, Wellness Wednesday, Dr. Karen Borg is joining our, our co-host. That is uh, an opportunity for Pamela and Rich and um Dr. Karen and myself to talk about confidence. So we're excited about what we have coming up. So many great opportunities. Do not lose sight of what God's called you to do, what God's placed within you. The importance is, it's like Karen taught us today, there's hope for your health, but there's also hope for your life, your business in every aspect. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Dr. Karen has done, I I don't know why I'm about to call you Dr. Karen, but 
I've been fighting that. I mean, really, I don't know if something's in the works, but I've really been fighting that a lot. And um, when I addressed you and I said, well, maybe I'm thinking of Dr. Karen Board, but no, mm -hmm. it's something there. I don't know what that is, but at any rate, I'll just put it out there. I'm clean now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had but, my doctorate, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you don't know. It may be coming. Maybe you one don't day. Know who it may be one day. Okay. Well, listen, thank you all for joining us. Thank you for your patience. We want to look over, but you were sticking right with us the entire time. We're listening. I'm Beth Copeland, Georgia Christian Business Network. Visit our website, www.gcbnetwork.com. We would love to have you as a member, a sponsor. Continue to be a part of our community. Join our Facebook Live group, excuse me, our Facebook group. We need your support to undergird our vision to put God back in business. Have a great afternoon. Take care. Karen, I'll be in touch. Thanks for right. joining us. Bye-bye now. Bye.